Maybe you're like me. Sometimes I learn better from a story rather than sort of a straightforward lesson. With a straightforward lesson, it's very clear and laid out that this is the point that I should learn and that's the new information. But a story invites me to think about something from different perspectives. I can ruminate it, ruminate on it, and maybe learn some different things depending on, on the perspective that I look at the story. There's a story that I've thought about a lot over the years. It's, it's one that I heard for the first time many years ago. It's a story that comes out of the Buddhist tradition. Now, I'm not really sure where in Buddhism the story came from. If you know, maybe you can leave some comments about that, what you know about the origin. I'd find that really helpful. And while you're on YouTube, why don't you like this video, subscribe, and click the bell. So the story goes this way, and this is how I learned the story. There was a man who's running through the jungle, running as fast as he can. He's being chased by a ferocious tiger. And he's trying to get away from the tiger because he doesn't want to end up as the tiger's lunch. So he's running and running, but he knows he can't really outrun the tiger. And he comes out of the jungle into a clearing. And the clearing ends at a precipice. And he looks down from the precipice and sees below, hundreds of feet below, there is nothing but jagged rocks. He looks back and sees the tiger coming and looks down and sees the rocks. And he thinks, I have two choices, either to be mauled by the tiger or jump to my death on the rocks. Neither is appealing. And he's looking around trying to figure out what to do. And he spies this vine that's going over the edge of the cliff. And he grabs onto the vine and shimmies down. And just as he gets far enough down, the tiger's at the top, staring down at him, breathing heavily. He sees the tiger and he looks down and he sees the rocks and he thinks, what am I going to do? And he's looking around, trying to figure out if there's another option because he's not sure if the vine's going to hold or for how long he'll be able to hold on to it. And as he's looking around, trying to find another option, he spies in the cleft of the rock a single strawberry plant with a red, beautiful strawberry. And he reaches out and grabs the strawberry and pops it in his mouth. And as he eats it, he thinks, wow, that is the juiciest, best tasting, sweetest strawberry I've ever had. And that's how the story ends. Now, often whenever I've told this story, people want to know, well, what happens to the man? What happens to the tiger? What's going on? How do you come up with an ending? And it's important that we not have an ending because that causes us to reflect on, on what each piece of the story really is about. I think one way to understand this story, and it's not the only way, but it's one way, is to understand the man running through the jungle is a lot like us running through life, trying to get through life. And, you know, in a jungle, there's all kinds of stuff around us that can distract us. And coming from behind us is that tiger, that ferocious tiger. And that tiger may be like many things in our past. Things that we ruminate on, that we're concerned about, that we wish we would have done differently, ways that people hurt us, relationships that failed apart, all kinds of things in our past that we still carry with us, that that we play over and over again in our mind, that haunt us in certain ways. And we're not sure how to resolve them. And so they interfere with our life because they're still very active for us. The jagged rocks at the bottom of the cliff, well, they're sort of like our future. Many of us worry about the future and are concerned that we could get hurt in the future, but we don't know the future. 
Yet, we worry. We try to figure out how to avoid harm. And we can become very anxious about it. And both our past and our future can cause us many sleepless nights and really disturb us in so many different ways. But in the midst of all that action, in the midst of dealing with the tiger, his past, and, and the rocks, his future, the man is able to pause and see that in his present, there's a ripe, juicy strawberry for him. And he grabs it and enjoys it and appreciates it. You see, no matter what our past has been like, and no matter what our future will be, there's goodness and grace for us in the present moment. And it's important for us not to be caught up in the past or the future, but to live in the here and now, to be present and aware of what's happening around us so that we're able to perceive that strawberry that's growing in an unlikely place and reach out and grab onto it. Part of what spiritual practice does for us is enable us to let go of those things that haunt us or that worry us or that cause us anxiety and allow us to live more fully in the present moment, to appreciate life the way it is, and that in this moment, trust that there's going to be something good for me, something nourishing for me, something that enables me to appreciate the sweetness of life, like that strawberry. So I want to encourage you today to take time, to be focused, to be aware. Use your spiritual practice in a way that helps you to be present today to life's goodness as it's happening for you. To not be caught in the past or the future, but to be present. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave me some comments, share this video. But most importantly, Find the goodness that's in your life today. It's there. We all just need to be more aware and awake to experience it. Thanks.